Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bet the Edge. Happy Sweet 16. Happy opening day. Happy Thursday. It's V Money and the Well Capper. And as you know, on Thursdays, we like to cover multiple sports. We're going to do that here today, Drew, with college basketball and MLB, talking AL, NL Rookie of the Year market with our best bets. How are you doing? Uh, what are you looking forward to talking to today? And uh, what's up, man? Yeah, uh, licking my wounds still from uh, round one and round two of the NCAA Aren't tournament. But uh, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, NBA has come through huge for me this week. <laughs> so we are on the rebound. We are on the uh, on the comeback trail here. Um, and I have some decent, I feel like at least I have some decent reads on these games. At least the market is kind of in agreement with me on a bunch of these. So uh, I hopefully by the time you're listening to this, some of these prices are still available and it hasn't completely gotten out of hand. But uh, yeah, no, excited to break these games down with you. And yeah, very opening day is always a super fun time as well. So really cool time to be in, involved in sports. Yeah, we want to thank everyone for watching on our YouTube channel. If you are, I got the Pirates gear on for opening day. We probably won't win yeah, yeah. Uh, at all this week, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, insane week of college basketball, uh, Drew. You know, of course, the favorites went ramp rampant on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I had one of my worst weekends on Saturday and Sunday because I had some dogs in my pocket. Uh, so looking to get that back. Before we talk about the games, though, because only one of the lines has moved significantly uh, since Tuesday or Wednesday morning. Um, remember that NBA divisions parlay that I gave you about a month, a month ago, six weeks ago? Yeah, it's baby. Happen. It's going to Oh, happen. baby. Hey, the it's Mavericks just caught the Pellies, and yeah. all we need is the Thunder to catch the Nuggets who are a half game Dude. back. Dude, um, Friday's, Friday's Mavs-Kings game for all the marbles. This is going to be super oh. fun. Really need, a, really need a Mavs to back up. Like they were, they were almost too good yesterday. Like I wish it wasn't as convincing a win. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, that one's going to be huge on Friday. Yeah, I'm so excited. I have a uh, 40 to 1 in my pocket, 36 to 1, and 26 to 1 on those parlays. Okay. Uh, so come on, Mavs. Come on, Thunder. All right, Sweet 16. Let's head over to college basketball. So, uh, first game in the West region, Drew, number six, Clemson versus number two, Arizona. Seven and a half point spread for the Wildcats over under sitting at 151 and a half. And it's starting to tick up, trending towards 152, 152 and a half at most places. And honestly, I think that's the direction I would be looking in this game. What about you? Yeah, agree. Agree with the market in both of these. Um, Arizona is going to finish the job. New Mexico couldn't. They're going to beat the mighty Clemson Tigers. Um, and uh, I think ultimately, you know, Arizona is just so much clearly the you know the quality team here. Um, and uh, you know, I, you know, Clemson has a couple of the uh, hallmarks uh, of a team that number one, very lucky to be here. They were the beneficiaries of extreme shooting fortune uh, in the uh, first couple of weekends or first couple of games last weekend, uh, and they still do have sort of some telltale, um, you know, problems. Uh, their three point defense is a disaster. Uh, their ability to create turnovers is a disaster. So this Clemson team has this kind of the exact footprint up against Arizona to go down early, uh, get down by margin. Uh, and have no way to really come back. I, I honestly am not sure what path to victory looks like for Clemson. Uh, and I think the opener at six and a half here was a little favorable uh, for Arizona. And you've seen it now get bet out to seven and a half here at some of the sharper shops. And I think that's correct. So uh, Arizona here in you know is my uh, my side in this one. And uh, hopefully it's not even a sweat at this big old number. Yeah, I mean, when I looked at seven and a half, I wasn't too surprised at it. And I hate the fact that I bet Arizona to miss the elite eight, Drew, at minus 128 odds, and Clemson's plus 250 on the money line. So, oh. you know, terrible bet in general. Now I'm looking at a situation where, of that course, hurts. I would take the money line for Clemson, but I don't think they get there. Uh, they do have the offense, I think, to at least score, you know, 70 points or so on mm -hmm. Arizona. But as far as first and turnovers, offensive rebounding, free throw shooting, they don't match up very well with Arizona at all in these spots. So. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I think the Wildcats spread is the right side. Hate to say the favorite right off the bat is the play, uh, but that mm -hmm. is the side that I would lean, at least for money line parlays. I think the Wildcats get there, even though I'm going to be rooting for the, the Clemson Tigers of Orange. The one underdog that won on Saturday and Sunday outright, Drew, and I also had them in my pocket, so I'm a fan of Clemson. <laughs> um, East region, let's go with the repeat of last year's national championship game. Number five, San Diego State taking on. Number one, UConn Huskies. That spreads 10 and a half. Juice at minus 120 odds, 11 and a half in a lot of markets, and uh, 135 and a half is the total. Uh, what do you like in this game? So, huge disconnect here. 
between last year and this year. And I'm not 100% sure it's warranted. Um, you have uh, uh, oh, kind of a look back in time. Uh, Connecticut was seven-point favorites in the final. Uh, and the total was 131. Uh, oh, interesting, huh? 131. Now, now we're at 135? Hmm. Uh, don't know that I agree with that. UConn is playing slower. San Diego State still has a lot of the same issues of creating just neutral offense. And so I, I do not understand at all why we've had a four-point adjustment here to the uh, to the total. Do not think it's warranted. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, they were playing, the final was in a, a larger arena, which can affect shooting, and you would maybe downgrade the total a hair. This is going to be kind of in the, uh, uh, we're in the TD Garden, I believe, right? With the uh, those soft yep. rims. So, yeah, maybe the shooting is a little bit more favorable favorable conditions here for both of these teams and this is under pressure but um, my fare on this one is actually closer to 130 so i would have played under 132 133 the fact that we got 135 and a half give it to me um i had to google uh last year's uh championship game because i totally forgot it was basically a non-compete for the aztecs um i think i must have turned it off at halftime or or, you know what i think i think i remember actually now like they were they they made a little bit of a run coming out of the locker room and you're like yeah. oh maybe we get a game and then no no Connecticut just utterly buried them uh, and it was over um, so not a memorable game not really seeing uh, lots of reasons to um, believe that the Aztec it'll be different this time uh, but I will tell you that uh, adjusting from you know last year's fair seven to ten and a half is giving connecticut a lot of credit um and is it a better team yes but by three and a half points i don't think or two and a half points i don't think so so yeah. i guess it is three and a half yeah three and a half points that's a big old adjustment so uh I so yeah agree. san diego state is uh you know is probably the side if you want to get involved in sides here but uh i'm not gonna Ooh. do it i would take yukon as the side because okay. i do think the huskies are that much better <laughs> of a team um, okay. I've loved San Diego State all year, and they go on scoring droughts, Drew, which is definitely bothers me because they're so good defensively, and they play pretty quickly offensively at times. Like, if you get a team that can speed them up, they will absolutely play at that pace, but they play hectic, and that's when they turn the ball over. So UConn could try and speed them up at times, but honestly, I think the Huskies are so sound defensively, so good at shooting, so much better than San Diego State at three-point shooting that the Huskies have no problem here slowing this down, grinding San Diego State out the tough possessions and making them shoot threes. Because against UAB, I mean, they only went uh, 5 of 18 from three. So that's not something that you could really back here against a UConn Huskies team who, you know, is licking their chops because this is – they're so close to getting this repeat here, Drew. And, you know, um, I will say the under is the best bet too. That's something I locked in. And the last thing I'll make a note on is – and you may laugh at this, but this is a true statement. I don't care how it sounds. In a few years, when you're at a bar and you're playing trivia and they ask you, who did UConn beat in the national title of 2022 or 23, whatever year we consider this, 23, um, people will not remember San Diego State. Sure. That'll be a hard one for a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, I I think UConn does it to them again here. Makes them a a non-memorable team. So, any uh, lasting thoughts on the Huskies and Aztecs? Uh, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with you, I guess, ultimately. And like the market is coming around so hard on, on UConn. Like they're like, everybody yeah. believes <laughs> like, like yeah. I, this is really tough because like things are breaking in their favor. They're taking on San Diego state as 10 and a half point favorites instead of an Auburn team that a lot of people are really hot on. So, uh, this is favorable. Iowa state looks like a little bit vulnerable. They may lose to Illinois. You can make it Illinois instead of, you know, they, they ultimately their path might be a lot softer than what we thought, uh, out of the gate here. And, uh, if this is sort of, a uh, you know, a straightforward running back, then, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a man. How did I not see this coming? I know you were kind of flirting pretty aggressively with UConn right off the you know off the bat uh, here, and uh, you may, may may ultimately be quite right. Um, talking to somebody yeah. smart yesterday, they were saying like realistically, UConn's probably going to be at least three three and a half point favorites in every remaining game, which is uh, going to be tough for them to uh, find their way out of this tournament. Yeah, and their tournament price has dropped significantly over the last week, two weeks. I mean, we were talking plus 500 before Big East tournament play. Now they're surrounding, you know, plus 200, plus 210 market. And, Honestly, uh, yeah. if you can find a plus two anything, that's probably still, that's probably better. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, one lunch money bet I threw in that I'm thinking it might be a better play, Drew, um, is UConn to meet Purdue in the final, plus 700 and plus 800 is what I've got it at. Um, starting to think that's really a path for both of these teams. And, you know, we're high on Iowa State. Don't know if they're going to beat a UConn at all, if they even get past Illinois, as we're going to talk about. 
And then uh, Purdue's route, I mean, looks looks phenomenal. And Houston banged up, real banged up. Um, so loved our bets um, two, three weeks ago. Now, <laughs> <I'm starting to> think, <laughs> it was UConn and Purdue all along, Drew. Uh, but, you know, we've got more to talk about. Alabama, North Carolina, Illinois, and Iowa State. But first, we're closing in on opening day, and it's never too late to squeeze in another draft. So those for cramming in before the regular season starts, grab your Roto World Baseball Draft Guide. It's loaded with comprehensive positional rankings, projections, and player profiles to ensure your draft is a success. Visit NBCSports.com backslash draft guide and use code BASEBALL24 to get 10% off at checkout. And I actually uh, have mine right here. Uh, oh, look at that. Uh, All right. Doing some notes. I went back to my, my other job at the, um, <laughs> the juvenile center, and I brought them some rotor wheel draft guides, so football ones and stuff, to give them something to do, yeah. um, even though they were old. So we need the new ones, guys. Come on. Get yeah. to working. All Who's right. on the cover? I don't recognize him. Um, I don't know. Some guy that gambles on the side. Ah, okay. Um, nice. He plays his bets. Yeah, he's a, <laughs> I he's a millionaire in two, two different ways. Yeah, I should recognize uh, But him. Sweet 16 Part 2, Alabama and North Carolina, a four verse one. Tar Heels were four and a half point favorites, but I saw right before the show started, right before we filmed this, Drew, uh, UNC now a five point favorite at some yeah. shops. Five and a halfs are looking to pop up. Total really high, 173 and a half. I kind of like the under here. Uh, any opinions for you? Oof. I am very tempted to take the dog. Alabama has defensive issues. We know this. However, um, they can fill it up from three. They can. And they're going to, they, you know, plan A is pretty straightforward for Alabama here. Get up shots. Get up shots from three. Like if they're falling early and you can put uh, UNC in a little bit of a, uh, a, you know, a headlock here, like I think that sets up pretty well. Um, I don't know that ultimately Alabama gets the win outright. Uh, I'm not as tempted money line as I am tempted just to take the points and hope hope this game comes down to kind of final possessions. But um, yeah, I thought the opener on here was more fair than what we're currently seeing in terms of market uh, sentiment. Um, yeah. I would have I would have made this one closer to three and a half. I thought the opener wasn't going to get bet much at all, and so the fact that this is now going to be flirting with five, maybe even five and a half by the time we get to close, has me uh, has me ready to make a play on the Crimson Tide, even though this is a team that is not to be trusted in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm like, how did I take a ticket on Arizona and miss when Alabama was right there? I mean, the price in Alabama wasn't that great, right? Uh, but much safer pick, probably in my opinion. But I'll say this because you noted Alabama's three point shooting. And while Mark Sears was, I mean, elite in his last game, the rest of the team went three of 20 from deep against Grand Canyon. And why UNC's defense is no joke, and I've been saying it all year, Drew, they did allow uh, Michigan State and, what, Wagner, whoever it was, to go 13 of 34 from three, which is 38%. Um, so that is concerning because Alabama is going to try and run up and down the court on them. UNC will try and slow it down. But if the Tar Heels go into Alabama's pace, then, yeah, I mean, I think Bama could probably cover this game because – Neither team, UNC is not forcing many turnovers, and they're not turning the ball over either. Um, but the one thing they're doing, 14 offensive rebounds, uh, they've only allowed in the last two games. So Alabama's got to hit the offensive boards hard here, Drew. But with a total of 173 and a half, I kind of think that's probably likely to happen. Do um, you have an opinion on the total before we can talk about Illinois and Iowa State? Well, your point is for both teams is correct. Like neither of these teams create turnovers. So if you want extra possessions to close a gap, you better get your offensive rebounds. And for what it's worth, Alabama, better offensive rebounding team than uh, North Carolina by margin. Uh, however, North Carolina's complementary defensive rebounding rating is quite good. Uh, so yeah, I think like really like that's probably where the game's won or lost is um, if uh, if the threes aren't falling for Alabama uh, in a close game. Like who is coming up with that? Because right now it's not obvious who's coming up with that. Uh, it's gonna yeah. be a, you know that's gonna be war. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think North Carolina probably comes through here, but uh, I haven't made a play yet. Um, but Alabama's calling. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I was on Michigan State against North Carolina, and if um, if you were watching here with us live, oh, yeah. uh, then you could see, well, hold on, because North Carolina right now is getting 75 to 85% of the spread money and handle money uh, for money line and spreads. So last week it was a similar thing against Michigan State, and I was like, well, I mean, I like North Carolina. They're a better team, but I guess I'll take Michigan State since everybody and their mother is on North Carolina. And they came through, and it seems like everyone's on them again. So. Uh, yeah, I might line up on Alabama, Drew. I might be with you here, but I think both teams, uh, you'll get a good live spot here, probably plus 200 or better on each squad mm. with the pace of play and total of 173 and a half. 
Okay. Total that's slightly lower, but higher than I thought. Illinois versus Iowa State. Cyclones drew only one and a half point favor. Total's 146 and a half. That speaks to me that probably Illinois is going to be able to put up points here against Iowa yeah. State because we know the Cyclones defense is number two, if not number one in the country. Yeah, this market is uh, is suggesting that Illinois' offense is going to find their find their way into this game, uh, which is a problem for Iowa State because Iowa State's <laughs> offense is, uh, you know, as even though you know there's nothing to write home about about Illinois defensively, like just the general the fact that um, they can put some serious pressure on you is is uh, enough to kind of spook you if you're thinking about laying a you know point and a half here with Iowa. Um, you know my raw numbers which are tilted towards very good defensive teams in general say this should be more like a three-point game um and the fact that uh you know the market is kind of set up the way it is tells me that this is probably there's probably some sharp money here that's lined up with illinois um balanced action uh short line like this uh the fact that it hasn't come towards the you know sort of the generic ken palms and the and the t-bomb uh, type mm-hmm. of ratings tells you that there's somebody who's putting their thumb on this one for Illinois. Um, all that said, uh, they still have the key problem, which is they can't create turnovers. They're 360th in the country. Uh, and while they are good at offensive rebounds, it still is that's a that's gonna be an issue if um uh you know if Illinois State has a, an advantage in the second half of mm-hmm. you know a decent you know decent margin. And then the flip side is true where Illinois State is incredibly effective at creating turnovers. And so if they are trying to close a gap, are they the bet yeah in the second half? Probably. And so uh I'm gonna keep my powder dry on this one just because this is probably a fair number uh pregame. And I'm gonna look for an opportunity to come in on this one Iowa State either if they if they're up by uh three possessions. Uh, at halftime, it's probably a bet to Iowa State to continue to pad that lead. And if they mm-hmm. are down by three possessions, I believe in them uh, in their ability to close the gap with uh, specifically with their turnover defense uh, and with their incredible um, uh, ability to uh, create, you know, to get there in transition against an Illinois squad that has some limitations in that regard. Illinois, again, if they're forced to, um, you know, if they're forced in, into comeback mode, the transition defense from Iowa State is incredibly good. Uh, the transition, just in general, their 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 ball security is incredibly high. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what Illinois does to get back in this one, other than just get run hot shooting, uh, and that's not something I like to hang my head on. Yeah, no, I, I, you summed it up perfectly well because I mean a lot of the same things. I feel I feel the similar um, instinct to wait in this game, probably grab something at halftime here because when I look at these two teams, I mean I've loved them both. They've both been two of my favorite, probably four or five teams all year to watch and cover yeah. and bet. But Iowa State so physical, Illinois not so much. Iowa State so careful on offense, Illinois reckless and fast. Yeah. Iowa State wreaks havoc on defense, Illinois does not. I mean, the top talent there for Illinois is all there. They're the better team. They got the better three guys. But something tells me, and the market, it looks like the market tells me, that's probably what it is, that Illinois is going to make this a game. So, yeah, I, I'm tempted to take the dog here and mm-hmm. wait till halftime, though, and probably get a better number because if Iowa State's defense does look great in the first half, Illinois has the talent, Terrence Shannon particularly, to keep this game close. Um, I think he should be a top three pick yeah. in the NBA draft group. That dude really? Insane. Ooh, that's a hot he's take. Cause he's uh, he's kind of on the outside looking in in terms of a lot of the evaluators for some reason. I don't know if well, he, it is weird because like, he's six six senior. Like He can shoot. Like I'm not exactly sure what uh, uh, what they aren't seeing with uh, Terrence Shannon. But uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a little off the radar right now among the NBA people. He will be a steal wherever he yeah. goes, I'm telling this you. This year's but, uh, Jaime yeah. Hawkes. Uh, better than that, man. He's got the game, bro. Like, yes, Darren Shannon has NBA game, um, and he gets to the rack better than anybody in the in the, okay. it's, in the whole entire. I'll fit him for a Heat uniform oh, now. Then is what you're saying. <laughs> I would love it. I'm a fan as long as uh, they get him next year, not this year, because they're Orlando Magic, baby. That's our squad. All right. Before we talk AL and NL Rookie of the Year, the Premier League race is tightening up. It's one of the most important matches of the season Sunday when Arlington Halad and Man City take on Arsenal and the Gunners. Trying to claim their first title in 20 years. You could watch that matchup at 11:30 a.m. Eastern, only on NBC and Peacock. I actually have some Arsenal in my pocket, thanks to Mr. Brad Thomas. Um, he made me play some soccer bets for him, and I was like, "For that well game play. or to win the Premier League?" Win the Premier League, um, and then he's got me some Champions League. This bets one's too. the game. Um, this game decides it pretty much. Okay, well, maybe I'll tune in at 11:30 a.m. Eastern, Peacock this weekend. All right, hey, uh, AL Rookie of the Year, Drew. This is yeah. the part of the show where you're going to shine because 
I am lost on what to do. <laughs> I guess I would go with Evan Carter, three hundred. But uh, I, he had a yeah. game last year, season. I don't know. Is is uh, shining akin to saying I've been telling everyone and their mother to bet Wyatt Langford uh, all off season, and now he's at an unbettable price because <laughs> that's where I had, my head is at. What, what, what um, price did you get him? I got in, started getting into 800, got some 600, Ooh. got some 400, and then I stopped. Uh, 225 is about right. Uh, Wyatt Langford, if you have not already heard, is going to be a huge component to the uh, Texas Rangers offense this year. Uh, everyone from camp, everyone who covers the sport that you know covers the Rangers is basically like, I cannot, cannot believe how well this guy is hitting the ball right now. Uh, and uh, he's got a lot of um, yeah, basically just like wire to wire starter and it's just going to accumulate volume as far as I can tell you. So Langford, uh, is, uh, the only, uh, shot I took here. Uh, and, and I, I would be perfectly willing to listen to arguments of some of the longer shots now to play a little defense since the market has moved so aggressively in my direction. Um, but I don't have a strong read, uh, of who of these other guys is going to be a, a major can, you know, major, um, the contributor and that's really the key like if you're going to find a rookie of the year winner you need someone who is literally like volume 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 like they are going to start 140 games like that's kind of ma- makes makes all of the difference in the world uh if you have eyes for a player that you think can get called up at the end of april then wait until the end of april to bet them <laughs> right like that's kind of the only other key guidance uh, i can give you here but uh what's the uh what's your uh thought on evan carter out of curiosity I mean, it's just the fact that he played late last season, had those 22 right. games on his belt, played in the postseason. You know, he had a good batting average. His strikeout to walk ratio was, you know, he doubled his strikeouts to walks, but that's something you expect from a rookie who only get better. I mean, he's just – he was the one guy where I thought, well, I know Evan Carter is a great – I know what to expect out of him right now, but the case you make for Ryan Langford in the movement here uh, certainly makes you seem like the two Texas Rangers are probably the, the best bets right now and there's a couple guys i'm going to talk about on the nl side could end up uh splitting the ballot though for sure uh and you know one of these guys ultimately could emerge and it's it's worth noting too and maybe maybe why your price has gone down some is because jackson holiday didn't make opening day roster he's a third on odds right now plus 450 um and he's supposedly going to be a monster so uh that probably helps your case for the closing line value too right now but maybe you get a better number on a guy like jackson holiday when he does make his uh, appearance here but yeah i feel like it's a, a two-man race is there an obvious Rangers. spot for holiday because the orioles not are good <laughs> like, yeah, i'm not 100 yeah. i'm not 100 sure what the what the timetable is going to be like for him um you know there's definitely i think uh i i don't know there are people who are probably angry they want to see holiday on the roster they want to see him get some reps but um uh i'm angry yeah, we, he may he may be a reason. later he may be a later call up than I think people are expecting. Yeah, well, it's nothing nothing unfamiliar for me, man. Because uh, you know, <laughs> as a Pirates fan, we're gonna pick, switch to the NL now. Uh, I was gonna say, you know, I like Paul Skeens at thirty to one, forty five to one, fifty to one. I've seen out there, okay. and then he doesn't make the MLB roster for the Pirates, yeah. and I'm like, oh, this guy was supposed to be a stud for us. Um, so now my NL pick is probably better worth waiting, but at a 45 to one price I saw earlier, some might probably be willing to, to take a little nibble on. Um, do you have a strong opinion here on the NL? Cause I feel like this race is probably tougher, especially since the Dodgers star rookie got shelled in his first start. Yeah. He's a bet against <laughs> That's yeah, all I can tell you. Now, after what we saw, there's no way you could take him. I, and it's like, it, it's not even that. Like one start means everything. It's just the stuff that doesn't look ready. Uh, and you know, I, I at some point the Dodgers, you know, this is Do- Dodgers are in must win now. The way that they've con, you know, come at this, uh, and you know, if he, if ultimately they decide, you know, hey, he needs he needs time to be the guy, then you know, him getting the uh, the type of uh, volume he would need to be the rookie of the year, I think, is pretty suspect. So. Um, yeah, I mean, my 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 general sense here is that uh, the favorite at the top of the board is a bet against. Um, I am kind of intrigued by the uh, the Brewers and Jackson uh, you know, Churio. You think I pronounced that right, Churio? Um, because he, you know, he's 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 the big shortener in this market because he did make the opening day roster. Um, I in general. Uh, I like the idea of a guy who's a you know a corner outfielder because he's going to get more opportunities to start. Like he's just, like the volume is likely going to be there, right? Like he's not uh, he, he doesn't. I don't think he has any type of soft role 
uh, I think this is um, you know opportunity for them to play them a little left and right and then figure out permanent role. Uh, and I think uh, in just in general, he's he looks like he has sick defense and he's going to be able to steal bases, uh, which means he's going to at least get the the chance to play. Um, and uh, can't really say that for any of the other guys who are kind of at the top of the board. Um, I think there's a talent argument to be made for Jackson Merrill. Um, I don't know ultimately if he's going to have a permanent role, um, but, you know, he's taken over uh, an important part of, um, you know, outfield duties uh, in the absence of, um, Juan Soto, who's now a Yankee, and I think uh, you know Merrill could be uh, good enough uh, to kind of hold on to that position, and hold on to that role for uh, long enough to get the volume to be in consideration. So his number uh, has come; it's getting shorter as well. It's down to eight one. Yeah, gosh. When I was shopping around earlier, I was seeing some tens and twelves, and I was like, oh, that might be that might be a decent shot shout there. But uh, eight to one, that's probably a pass uh, or at least a monitor. Um, and you know, I think. For the most part, rookies of the year they don't they emerge kind of in the June to July time frame. So I don't think you have to absolutely be uh, first to market on any of these guys. Um, although I certainly appreciate being early to market on Wyatt Langford. So fingers crossed, he, yeah. he's a guy. Yeah, <laughs> no, I love that call. And uh, yeah, I'll say a lot of the rookies do struggle um, out the gate in the first few months. I just wrote a uh, column for NBC Sports and why I finally. I, I decided Julio Rodriguez is my AL MVP pick, uh, Drew. Um, I threw it in there at 10 to 1 odds, and it's because he's had slow starts his first two years, batting about 209, 239, and a lot of rookies will do that. But once you said June, July kicks in, they start getting those numbers up to 260, 270. Now they're getting the ribbies. So, yeah, um, yeah definitely grab somebody now worth a good price. I'd look to get some uh, more once the summer gets nearer. All right, Drew, close it out. Best bets for Thursday. What you got? Anything? Oh boy. Um, under in Yukon, San Diego State rematch. Uh, <laughs> oh, 130, 135 is too much. 135 is too much, guys. This should be a one low 130s. And uh, yeah. That makes me smile because that's the only one that I like that I felt confident <laughs> playing on Thursday. So let's go. It's the Bet the Edge collab, the well capital right. money. We're going under 136 or 135 and a half. 136, what I got on my sports book right now. So that is it for us today. Uh, four college basketball games covered, some futures, some baseball, all that and more in NBA a little bit too. But uh, we appreciate you so much for watching. For Dan, our producer, for Drew, for myself, thank you guys. And we will see you next time. Enjoy Sweet 16. Enjoy opening day. Have a great Thursday.